All right, guys, I'm going to give this a shot. Hopefully this works out as well as I thought it would. And it will be for the glory of God. The Book of Job. Introduction to Job. Many people who read the book of Job miss the God-centered message because they are focused on the man-centered problems. Why the righteous suffer is never really answered in this book. As God shows Job, knowing the answers to life's problems is not as important as knowing and understanding the awesomeness of God and how wise he is. <clears throat> the author of the book of Job is unknown. Most likely he was an Israelite because he uses the Israelite covenant name for God. We do not know when Job was written. Though the account describes history around the time of Abraham, that is around 2000 BC, the first 11 chapters of Genesis predate the story of Job, but they were not written down in a book from until the time of Moses around 1500 BC. There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. There were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was seven thousand sheep and three thousand camels and five hundred yoke of oxen and five hundred she-asses and a very great household so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east and his sons went and feasted in their houses every one his day and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and drink with them <coughs> In describing Job as upright, God has given insight into the character of Job so that as we read this story, we won't misinterpret what is going to happen to this man. Job is a morally upright person, a good man who loves God. He fears God, meaning that he has a correct perspective of God as holy and righteous. Because he has this perspective, he shuns evil, meaning he turns away from it. And it was so. And when the days of their feast were going, were gone about, that Job sent <clears throat> and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord, and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. <clears throat> and the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, 
one that feareth God and ensueth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job not, doth Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made an hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he hath, and about and on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thine power. Okay, we're going to jump down here to this one, because I think it's important to read. And it's true, you can read it for yourself in the Bible. I always make sure everything lines up with the Bible before I come down here and read any of this key to our understanding of Satan is that he can do nothing unless God allows it. We're going to go up here too. This is a good one. God points out to Satan this man Job and his goodness. The word considered is a military term that is used of a general who is studying a city before he attacks it so that he can develop a strategy to destroy it. So God is asking Satan if he has found any weakness in Job by which Satan might gain control or cause him to stumble. God's implication is that Satan can find nothing to cause Job to stumble. All right, let's go back over here. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thine power, only upon himself. Put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And there was a day when his son and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job, and said, The oxen were plowing, and the asses feeding beside them, and all the said beans fell upon them, and took them away. Yeah, yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven, and hath burned up the sheep and the servants, and consumed them, and I only am escaped to tell thee alone. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands, and fell upon the camels, and have carried them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and only I am escaped to tell thee. <clears throat> and he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house, and behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness, and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the younger men and they are dead and i only and, and i ex am escaped alone to tell thee tragedies begin to befall tragedies begin to fall upon J job's house verse 16 is noteworthy because the servant says that that the fire of God fell from heaven 
Yes, God allows it, but Satan is behind it. As we understood back here, And one of the big things that we need to understand about uh, Job, the book of Job, is uh, Romans 8.28. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground, and worshipped, and said, Naked I came out of my mother's room, and naked I shall return thither. The Lord gave me, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. We got a little bit of time left, so I'm going to jump I'm going to jump to Romans real quick. Romans 8, 8, 28. This is really good stuff here. It says, uh, He that searcheth the heart knows knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. As we see here, Job was called according to a purpose. <clears throat> Job is helping Christians learn that Satan can't do anything without God's permission. So the next time you fall into some tribulation, remember Job and remember that his sons died and that fire fell And the Chaldeans stole from Job. All this happened to Job and his family. <clears throat> God is using him as a witness right now. <clears throat> 